I'm Mary Ann Hansen. I'm an extension plant pathologist with Virginia Cooperative Extension and the Virginia Tech Plant Disease Clinic. And we're out here today on August 16th, 2018, looking at a disease of sweet basil. If your basil is turning brown before you think it normally should, it may have a disease called downy mildew that's pretty common in basil these days. Um, this is a disease that came into the mid-Atlantic region around 2008 and we see it pretty much every year now. And the symptoms can fool you because it can look like your plants are just nutrient deficient. You don't see any really distinct lesions on the leaves. Um, your plants just kind, kind of turn an off color and then kind of patchy yellow and eventually brown and die. And um, you may see what looks like dirt that splashed up on the lower leaf surface. But if you look at that lower leaf surface with magnification, you can see that there's actually the gray fluffy growth of the downy mildew pathogen on those leaves. The name of the downy mildew pathogen that attacks basil is Paranospora belbarii. And unlike a lot of other downy mildew species, it can grow at a pretty wide temperature range. It, uh, the maximum temperature that, it, that it's active at would be around the mid 80s. Um, high humidity and prolonged leaf wetness also favor the disease. So we're seeing a lot of basil downy mildew on susceptible cultivars this year following an early, earlier rainy period um, this spring. And so we can see some pretty severe symptoms on susceptible cultivars, such as this one that my friend grew um, in her garden. And you can see the contrast with the basil I planted, which is a cultivar called Eleonora. And this cultivar has some resistance to downy mildew. It's not completely immune, um, but in resistance trials, it uh, showed less disease than many other cultivars. And so my basil may develop symptoms later in the season, um, but for now I'm providing my friends who planted susceptible cultivars with all the basil they need for making their pesto. There are a number of ways that you can try to control downy mildew. Um, Fungicides, there are registered fungicides for commercial use, but most of the fungicides that are registered for homeowner use are not terribly effective against this disease. So you really need to use other means. Um, anything you can do to reduce the humidity will help control the disease. So if you space your plants out really well, so you get good air circulation around each plant, that can help to reduce the humidity. Um, or if you grow your basil in pots on your deck, then if high humidity is predicted in the night when the spores form um, or a, a heavy dew fall is predicted, then you can bring those pots inside at night and put them back out during the day. And this can help delay the onset of disease. But by far, the best thing you can do to avoid the disease is to plant a resistant cultivar. So you can try Eleonora like I planted this year, um, but the good news is that there are some new cultivars coming on the market. And there are three new cultivars that came out of the Rutgers University breeding program, um, and they are commercially available now. They have pretty dramatic names, so you'll probably remember them. Um, one of them is called Devotion, another is called Obsession, and the third is called Thunderstruck. And these are supposed to have good resistance to basal downy mildew. Um, the other thing to remember is that some of the other basil types other than sweet basil, like Thai basil, lemon basil, and some of the red leaf types um, are also less susceptible to downy mildew. So it's mainly a problem of sweet basil. But if you didn't happen to plant a resistant cultivar this year, um, you might want to go out and take a look at your plants. And if they're looking a little peaked, you might want to hurry up and harvest those leaves uh, for your pesto before your plants go downhill.